windy. These will not be the most professional shots. Jesus Christ! More footage that would have been taken of this area. But I'm not really equipped for that. Hello my lovelies, it's Monday morning. You join me here in the Peak District National Park and I'm going home. Let's do this. on a single event when he just happened to do it a little bit too quickly perhaps not on purpose a little too quickly for her comfort and she would never ever let him forget it okay so from this point we start climbing right up onto the tops and 
I remember this road so, so well. I've driven it again thousands of times, if not 10,000 times. But I know that a lot of work has been done to it over the years. It'll be interesting to see what more original features remain. This bridge is new. And of course, it never used to be a dual carriageway. It used to be one of those weird roads with a three-lane road, which, looking back, was kind of bloody terrifying because the middle lane could be used by people in either direction. Seems like lunacy now. God, I wonder how many accidents there were when two overtaking vehicles just met each other in the in the middle lane, going in both overtaking in opposite directions. And here we are at the highest point, 1,340 feet up in the air. Bloody hell! They're rebuilding my childhood. Well, I never did. Hopefully, we will find some roads and areas that are exactly as they used to be. I'm sure we will. I'm sure I know where to look. God help us, they're properly cutting up the mountain here. God above, what's all this? Lordy, Lordy. I'm actually struggling to pick out any reference points. I should know exactly where I am, and somehow I don't. There's nothing that's as it should be. Oh, hang on. Okay, I may... I may have picked up on where I am. It's just all so, so different. Massively, massively different. Right, to explain, uh, I'm not going directly home. If I were going directly home, I would be continuing on the A465 Heads of the Valleys Road. <clears throat> where I am going, or where I'm trying to go, is over Treherbert Mountain. And the reason I'm doing that is, I'm not going to be doing this adventure entirely alone. I am going to hopefully pick up a man called Sean, who I've never met before. But he keeps appearing on my portable electric devices via the gift of YouTube. Aha! Now I know where I bloody am. Now I know where I bloody well am. Ah, yes. Now then. <laughs> the industrial um, the industrial estate to the right is where I taught the kids to drive. Here we go, darlings. I know exactly where I am. I know exactly where I'm going. We're going over Treherbert Mountain. Oh, a car on three wheels. Naturally. Waterfall. Any chance of any phone signal up here? Ah, looks like there is. Hello? 
Hello. I'm on the top of the world looking down at, what was it? I'm on the top of the world looking. Oh, creation, yeah, that's the one. I'm at the top of the Rekos Mountain. God, I remember this so, so well. Speed cameras? Oh God, and the bloody 20 mile an hour speed limit. So, noisy boy, as you can see I'm back in the same spot but I thought I'd have a wander around this little picnic area and I'd forgotten this element of the, uh, of the view here, have a look at this. Look at that, you can see the road as it snakes around there you can see the reservoir and this is a new thing to me um, it looks like an unofficial ad hoc graveyard or garden of remembrance and somewhere over there my lovelies is home and somewhere over here is Sean I was just saying on my video if they're going to let this tree grow tall, then it's going to block the view. And the whole point of coming up here is to see the vista. But over there, where the reservoir, you can't see it because it's so thin, but that is where the zip wire goes across. Zip wire? Yes. That's a new thing. On top of the mountain there is a little shed where you can go and attach yourself to a, a rope and throw yourself off. Right. Let's make our way home and on to another mountain that is a bit more of a hidden gem and which holds a lot more significance to me personally. It's not quite as warm as it could be out right there. This is summer. What are you about? Okay, so here we are back at the point at the bottom of the mountain. Now there are two options here, the, the main road down the dual carriageway or the old road. Now, somewhere over to, to the left is the way to Pontwalby Viaduct. Ah, is that where the canal is? No, it's the old railway line. Right. And the viaduct was built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel. He was a busy lad, dude. He, he was a busy lad, and it's a stunning walk. He liked to travel the country. He must have had a bike. Tell you what, let's... Now, really, we need to turn right here. I was just about to say, is, isn't Clint Heath down here somewhere? Yeah. Oh, I got that wrong. I just remember we turned to the right by a pub. We'd have turned right there, we'd right. Have turned right there okay. for um, Punky Farm. Right. Uh, but I'm just going to have a drive through the village as we're here. Now this is entirely unchanged. See this rock there on the right? I didn't catch. I didn't catch it because it was covered by some trees. But there was a sign saying the museum. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. It's pointing to a museum down here somewhere. And this is where Ruth Maddock and um, Max Boyce used to live. Well, Max still lives here, I think. Um, yeah. With his leak. And there's a statue of him. Ah. Lovely chap. And he's one of those rare comedians that are funnier when off stage than they are on stage. I used to see him most days in the post office. I was doing some mail order bits uh, and he was presumably selling merchandise. And he would have us, whoever was in the post office, he would have us rolling about on the floor. And there used to be a paper shop just there, paper shop and sweet shop on the right there. And that was where he bought his first guitar. Um, and Ruth Maddock was my back neighbour. She was the nearest house to my back garden, so not a yeah. horizontally neighbour, but a back neighbour. So how does it feel to be back? Because 
when I came back, it felt familiar but different. Yeah, I think that's. I'm trying to take it in. It's. It's not that different, actually. I found that. Tattoo lounge. I found yeah. it was very easy to fall into the mindset of. I'll go and say hello to so-and-so, and then you realize, oh, they've been dead for 25 years. That is the odd thing, isn't it? That is the odd thing. We'll go down to the Lament flag, and then spin around if the Lament flag is still there. And here we are, the Lament flag, it is still here. And we will take advantage of their car park. Now, this is... Um, a more adult memory. I remember my grandfather was off on some paratrooper reunion and actually doing a parachute jump at the age of nearly 80. And I was duly dispatched to look after my grandmother, chop the wood, bring the coal in, so on and so on, and which I was very happy to do. And one night I took myself down to the Lament flag walked down, I couldn't drive at that time, and uh, I'm afraid, I got so drunk, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, and of course then I had to wobble back and try and hide this incredible drunkenness from my, from my grandmother who was, would have been appalled by such behaviour. But in those days, you had to walk, because there were, you know, you'd have to wait like an hour for a bus and you didn't have a car so that's why everybody was so thin in them days. Yeah. My grandmother was often appalled by things. She had a cleaning lady. Oh that now that is posh. Um, but oh they were, they were terribly posh. I'll tell you how posh my grandparents were. My grandfather's best friend who we'd known for 50 years was John Crates. And up to the moment that my grandfather died, his best friend in the world always called him Mr. Hughes. Never called him Harry, never called him by his first name. And that's his best friend. Because my, my grandfather was quite highly regarded in the local society. He was, um, he was a war hero because uh, he was an army man. He was actually born and brought up in the colonial Raj in India. Um, and then when he came came out of the army, he became a civil engineer and he was the big boss over all of the open cast. So for both of those reasons, he was um, quite highly regarded. And my grandmother was a terrible snob. She would have put Hyacinth Bouquet to shame. And there in front of us is a mural on the, the wall of the Dinas Rock. Happy 80th birthday, Max. A mural. A mural, yeah. Right, and we will take a very brief detour. And let's see how this has changed. I can remember the 80s when there were hardly cars and you'd only see about a handful of cars in a day and now look at it, they're everywhere. Ah, it's still here. Oh, it's oh, been turned into a... Look at this house on the left. It's been turned into a... That used to be Jones the Buses. Very nice house. That used to be a, a bus depot. Right. Believe it or not. And the bus driver, his name was Ernie, and he was known as Ernie the Journey. But the local undertaker was also called Ernie, and he was known as Ernie the Final Journey. <laughs> Some of the names were fabulous. There was a chap who was called Die Raw Materials, or Die Raw for short. He ran the local... Well, this looks a bit posh up here. It looks as if we're on um, a seaside estate. What started to happen here was that all of these dwellings were prefabricated bungalows set in plenty of land. And then as people died and they got sold, they got 
knocked down and posher new houses were built in their stead. But there is some originality remaining. Auntie Olive used to, that was the big posh house in my day, just up there on the corner on the right hand side and that was Auntie Olive, she wasn't really an auntie. John Crates uh, lived in that house there. Look at these hills I in the snow. He's long gone now. Come down these hills in the snow on a bit of on a bit of cardboard. Look at the state of the place. Look at the state of the place. Now the story with this is, this was mine. Yeah. All right. And I sold this uh, 12 years ago, something right. like that. And knowing that it would be knocked down and used as a building plot. So is it is is it exactly the same? Exactly the right. same. Uh, it has been just left for the look of it. From the look of it, it has literally just been left and not been. Do you want to knock, see if there's any post? <laughs> <laughs> and it looks as if it hasn't been lived in since the day that I sold it. And I, I can't understand why. Alright, we'll go left now and. Now, when I was a child, this little industrial unit was here and it was behind that industrial unit where I had my very first kiss and in those days I don't know if it was the same in in your village oh this bit on the side is new it used to be we used to go round the back there hide round the back and in those days it was um, it was a penny for a kiss <laughs> I don't know if you did that no but I've heard and uh, yeah, I've heard stories. And it, that that was it. It was uh, it was a penny for a kiss. Also, we're now entering the Brecon Beacons. Caught according to that sign there. Uh, the Angel. That's right. It was, wasn't it? The Angel. You parked in the Angel, and then you went up to the Pont Smith Beacons Falls. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll come. That away. We'll come back there in in the summer, because that is the day where you needed to be. Nice. Look at these little houses here with all the flowers out. And a nice spot for lunch, the Angel used to be. And then if you head this hill. if you head down there, which is uh, a dead end, then that is where the rock climbers go. Right. And there's a very well known uh, rock face there which people travel from miles around. So yeah the waterfalls where the waterfall walk was up to the left there rock climbing to the right and we're heading up towards Astrofecta. Now there used to be a fantastic place for ice cream up here and homemade scrumpy cider. You can just imagine the horse and cart bringing the milk in the morning. Yeah. See now this is where nothing is changed. But it's nice to know that there are places. Exactly. Especially when the world is such in a mad place. Sometimes it's nice to go, that place is still the same now as it was 50 years ago. Do you think we kind of fall back into our childhoods as we, as we get older? We retreat to what used to be safe and comfortable? Oh, well, we're just about to go over the cattle grid, yeah? Well, they say, what's that saying? Give me a child of eight and I'll show you the man. Uh, yeah. And I do think when you get to a certain age, you start going back to that child of eight. And you want to surround yourself by the things that you had as a child or the familiar surroundings. The road on which the family mountain lies is a Roman road, believe it or not. Right. Called San Helen. Just go in here. There's a lot of. Uh, this is a. There's a parking place here, and there are walks and waterfalls and. You know, I think I remember so this. On. 
just as we approach it then I just had uh, a memory now this is where you used to come for ice cream oh, and yes, homemade there's... scrumpy cider and it looks like it looks like it's still a thing which is rather wonderful look at that old chapel there yeah uh, here we are this is unchanged look at the stone on these buildings St Mary's Church Oh, um, Senny Bridge. Now, I haven't seen that word for years. Senny Bridge was a place we used to go. I've just had a crisis of confidence, wondering if I've gone the right way. I think I have. Sometimes it's not the destination, it's the journey to get there. Indeed. The one thing I, ho I hope has changed is that a little bit further up this road, there used to be a gate and you had no way of knowing whether the gate was going to be open or closed. The farmer would open or close it presumably depending on the desired location of sheep or whatever the animals were. Which was fine except the gate was around a blind bend. So when you were coming in the opposite direction on a bicycle you would be doing around 55 miles an hour as you were going around that blind bend. Um, and if the gate was closed, you had absolutely no chance of stopping. And obviously the sensible thing to do would be to simply assume it was going to be closed and slow down accordingly, but we never did. And it must be fantastic to be here in the night. Just to sit and watch the stars. Still, utter stillness and yeah. quietness. Oh, look, gate! God, it's still here! What are the chances of that? Dear, dear. So, will the gate be open or will it be closed? Look at all these stones for the side. Old fashioned. These have been here for at least a hundred years. Very familiar to, um, of course, I'm surrounded by them at home now. Now, this is where we achieve sufficient altitude that we move out of the forestation and more up onto the tops. And we need to be aware that there could be sheep on the road at any time. This beautiful, stunning, beautiful. Oh, see what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, snuck the sh sheep here, yeah? and they know I'm, they know to move, so they have read. See, they've all gone to the same size, they've read the county court. Yeah. The sheep highway code. Now, if we go down to the right here, then that was a place we used to uh, we used to go to a lot when I was a kid, and I took my kids down there as well. Lovely place for uh, a picnic and um, a paddle and a swim. Now, this isn't the Brecon, though, is it? Yeah. All yeah, yeah. oh, right, this is part of the Brecon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Which is a national park. It is indeed. You can't actually see down to, oh, but you can see where the river comes down. There's a lovely little spot down there. Spent many, many hours there as a child myself and with my with my stepkids as an adult. I always used to keep um, a four before here in Wales, even when I wasn't living here permanently. When um, oh, the reason I was here for those couple of years is when. Before I got divorced, we separated, uh, and I came here. Before that, we um, we used the place as a weekend and holiday cottage. And I always used to keep a four before, just for tramping over the top of the beacons here. Look at that. Ah, oh, look, there's a walker. A fully experienced rambling hiker. He's been out here for four days and he still can't find a cafe. <laughs> I used to love, that's, that's why I always used to keep the fall before. I used to love coming up here in winter 
and in the snow. You got the feeling sometimes that you would be the the only vehicle that had been through that week. Had a bit of rain I wonder here. if you could get a deliverer up here. Yeah. Look <laughs> at that waterfall, that little stream. Beautiful. We are very nearly there now. We are approaching the summit. In fact, this is the best time probably to come and see this place because all of the streams are full of water. Yeah. And the roads aren't full of tourists. Another reason why I used to love coming here in winter. So many childhood memories around here. It'd be very easy to drive on there if you were going too fast. Yeah. And any moment now. It feels like we're going to fall off the earth. That is pretty much exactly what's going to happen. Except I won't let it fall off. <laughs> Will we fall off? Find out after after the break. This would, yeah, this would be the time to put the ad break in, wouldn't it? But that's just random stone in the middle of the field, though. Very odd, isn't it? That was on the way to Stonehenge, but they <laughs> they just gave up. <laughs> oh, just dump it here. We'll come back later. But these trees have got stories to tell. Oh. this part called? This is the Penhu. Penhu. Yeah. Let's get out and have a look then. Retreated to the warmth and sanctity. That he discovered of the car. he couldn't find his car keys. Yeah, well, <laughs> my ears are freezing. They feel as if they're about to fall off. Right, well, now the fun part is going to be doing a 3.10. Radio. Because the alternative 
is driving down the hill and a 30 mile round trip. And um, it's not today's journey. No. I can feel a drink coming on. And I do mean a coffee or something, not a not an alcoholic beverage. Perish the thought. Look at this. This is a tea, a coffee, and a plate of chips, nearly ten pounds. Which I didn't pay, so I don't mind. <laughs> Well, it's been a few years since I've been in here. But in there is exactly where I've just been for the last, probably longer than I think, because we've been chatting each other's ears off over tea and coffee and a small bowl of chips. Okay, you join us outside the pub where we two hard drinking Welshmen enjoyed a cup of coffee and two small, pots of tea and as I mentioned earlier the most overpriced bowl of chips you can tell it was coming to the end of the day in it's, Christendom it's 10 past 7 now so that's the advantage of changing the clocks but you could tell about half an hour ago it started to get busy yeah and I would imagine come back at 10 o'clock and they'd be like flankers in that I actually enjoyed that. Oh, thank you very much, by the way. So, when I come back, it will be sandwiches and a flask of tea. Absolutely. <laughs> Nobody seems to know what this house is for. Which one? That, that small little house. That, one? There. Yeah. that was never a house, was it? But, well, we think it was, prob it was probably the guy who lived on this side of the mountain. Because I remember him in the 80s where you had to go knock on his door to say uh, a rock had fallen, had fallen down. Oh, he was like... And um, he would come and clean, and then clean the road. Oh, he was like a kind of watchman yes. thing. Yes. So all these rocks okay. here, all this was dug out by hand. It was pink. And, uh, yes, you have to go and knock the door and say... Oh, I can't uh, George Cole. George, there's some... Um, Rocks on the road. And you have to come out and change them and get them off. I like this little bit here where you're going through the rock. It's lovely, isn't it? Still the ice cream, man. Right, well, I'm off home now then. Okay. So thank you very much. I'm <laughs> going to go on because I'm going to need milk in the house. Right, okay. Well, thank uh, you. You, paid, you paid for the coffee and, I can't, and the chips. Well, I can't wake up tomorrow without a cup of tea in the house. So no, that'd be hellish. Cup of tea and a bit of chicken I'm going to get. So uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button, put a thumbs up, put a bit of super chats and, uh, and all that jazz. Catch you next time. But the journey hasn't finished yet. It's to continue. Absolutely. Af after the break. Absolutely. Well, I've got to go and find a hotel. Oh, there we are.